today on Rambling About Cars. You want coupe SUVs? We got coupe SUVs. You want hyper cars? We've got hyper cars. You want teasers? Okay, we've got one, yeah, of, those one of those too. Yeah. We've got Genesis. We've got Porsche. We've got Aston Martin. We've got Subaru. So let's roll. It's podcast time. I am Christopher Smith. Mr. Chris Bruce is across the way. Welcome, Bruce. Welcome, Ramblers. Welcome, everybody. Any cool car stuff going on with you at the moment? Nope. Okay, then. <laughs> you see, Smith, with improv, I... you're supposed to do yes and. <laughs> I don't, I, 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 I'm not it's trying been to a say it. It's yes and, but that's okay. Nope it's... is an acceptable response. So. Um, it's, it's been a day. I take that back. I take that back. I put the roof up on the Mustang over lunch. Okay. Well, that 30 seconds, probably less than 30 seconds is car worthy. Yeah. Um, I, uh, I have a second bay open in my garage finally. So all of the cars are living in the garage. So I can't exactly say that I'm, you know, doing a wait, whole wait. lot better than you, but I, I got two cars in the garage now, two cars in a two car garage. So. Okay, living, so so living, nothing is in the driveway. Nothing is in the driveway. <laughs> My friend, that's space. That's I, space for something else. I, I, you're, I guess, well, yeah, yeah. What, well, I mean, what's what's a driveway for other than to park project cars in, right? Isn't this an old Seinfeld bit? Why do we park on a? Why do we drive on a parkway and park on a driveway? <laughs> No, that was a Gallagher thing, I think, wasn't oh, that was it? Gallagher? Okay. Way well, back. Yeah. Bravo what you... Gallagher. Yeah. R.I.P. Gallagher. Uh, yeah, he's, he's Ramblers, past, how's everybody doing out there in Rambling Land? We got Ted Adam Green in the house. Let's rock and roll and ramble away. Yeah. Any got... Ramblers, have you done something cool with your cars recently in the past week that you want to tell us about? Because Smith and I have it. So. <laughs> <laughs> We've got Group FBC here. Morning, Efron. Eric Efron, everybody's in the house. Sup, Ted? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And hey, good. wherever you're at, wherever you're listening, if you're new right now, you can join these ramblers here in the discussion, whether you're at Motor One on Facebook, Motor One Com Twitter, Motor One Com Facebook. Uh, you can type in your comments. It all comes into us right here on our live little screen, and we can all respond in kind, in time. All the good stuff, oh, and for our FBC, audio, buddy, you have no reason to feel ashamed at all. I cleaned my car for the first time in two years. My head is hanging in shame. I'm hoping you mean the in inside of your car, because X outside, I don't know what its things are like in Australia, but we have, I mean, literally for me, I've got like three car washes within five minutes I could get to, so I can go through a car wash anytime I want. But that inside stuff is, it, it takes some extra work. So, yeah. Well, I, hey, you're still ahead of me. You're still ahead of me. Um, last weekend, what did I do last weekend? I was working here in the, uh, I was doing some home renovation. I was trying to get the basement stairs, some walls up around the basement stairs. I'm going to have an electrician come in and put a bunch of stuff down here because turns out I've got a little bit of a model skilled model museum down here now and i need more power for stuff we're lighting everything up we're plugging Aww. everything in i'm Group gonna be FBC. sadly no i mean the outside yeah it but you live in australia i as far as i know hey i could be wrong here you guys don't get snow there you don't get salt on your roads there so there's much less Bro. of a thing it's it's september we don't have it hasn't snowed around here yet yeah, but it's going to within three, four weeks. Uh, I bet it's going to be longer than that. Well, I guess it depends Ooh. on where you're at. I mean, you get way up in the mountains, right? But you're it's going to be it's going to be northern, 80 de- lower Michigan. It's going to be 80 degrees Fahrenheit for me this weekend. Uh, I think it's going to be cooler than that for me. But OK. Yeah. Yeah. Um, head, head north. Head north. Hey, I guess so. Head north to get warmer. That's a weird concept. It uh, it just occurred to me, we have a podcast and we have things to talk about. We do, yeah, no, buddy. <laughs> come on, we were letting people come in. We were letting yes, we were, we were giving letting people a chance a little bit, giving our audio listeners who we still love. If you can't join us here live on the video, we still love hearing 
that you're listening to us every Friday is when we go up on Spotify, on Apple, on Google, on Deezer, Amazon, Deezer, yeah. Deezer, iHeartRadio, oh, and email us podcast at motorone.com. We, we've been a little light on emails. We do have one we're going to read here a little bit later on in the yep. episode. But yeah, sure shoot us your emails. Last week we were saying, hey, those of us here in the Northern Hemisphere, we're moving into autumn. We're yeah. coming into some color season. I'm hoping to have some color photos this weekend. I had some plans that switched around, so I'm doing something else. So before we get into our, your trees aren't changing there yet because I'm getting some oh, nice oh, oh, yeah. and yellows. Oh yeah. And... oh, yeah. I don't think it's, I mean, it's not peak for me oh, no. yet. Far, but but I had a little bit north, and it's going to be pretty close to peak. Yeah, and instead of, instead of going changing. south... I'm actually going north yeah. uh, for my little extended weekend. So okay. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. And yeah, podcastmoto1.com. Are you taking autumn color tours? Take photos and send them. We want to see them. We want to share them with oh, all the I'd ramblers. I love to out there. see them, especially just all over the world, all over the country, just whatever. Because even me, like I, there are a lot of like gold and yellows. We're not quite getting to that orange stuff yet, but we're probably a few weeks away from the oranges. But Golds yep. and yellows are all over the place. Yep, I've got I've got gold, I've got red popping around here. A um, with, red. with a fair amount of green. Um, I've got a lot of acorns. I've got acorns yeah. everywhere this year in the backyard. Yep. Well, let's get this thing started. Let's talk about uh, kind of in terms of traffic, one of our bigger debuts of the week. It's an interesting car, and that is the uh, the Lexus. Why did I just say Lexus? The Genesis GV80 Coupe, and technically also an updated GV80 non-coupe debuted at the same time. Yep. Um, we're going to focus on the coupe, but kind of whatever we talk about, the changes apply to them both. Um, and this is, uh, it just debuted in South Korea today as we're recording the show. Yeah. We do not know a thousand percent for certain. Absolutely. It's going to come to North America. We're pretty sure it's going to come to North America because it's a major market for Genesis and mm -hmm. they, they kind of send a lot of their stuff here. And yeah, it's, you know, it's the coupified version of the GV80. And you can see in some of the photos we have here, we also have the non coupe version. But um, some big changes are afoot. And among them is that you can now get, let me get the size right. I believe it's 24 inches. It's 24 inches, right? 27. You're talking about that, that, that big Mondo screen up there in the, in the front. That is a big 27 inch screen. Um, that you get inside for the GV80, that's on the coupe and that's on the regular SUV. Um, which I mean, this is a refresh for the standard Genesis GV80 SUV, it is indeed. But, but this is the first time we've seen the coupe. Um, of course, we saw the coupe concept earlier this year, we saw it in and, April, so and it's based this is almost exactly like, yeah, the concept. I was gonna the say, concept was barely a concept, it was, <laughs> it's, a, it's a concept, the concept had just like two bucket seats in the back instead of the three row bench um, that, that we have. And, and sorry, by three row, I mean, you sit three people in one bench seat. Two row, this isn't three the, the, Yes. Thank you. Three abreast. This isn't a three row SUV. This Good is enough. a two row. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, the coupe concept just had two seats there in the back, two seats in the front. This has the second row bench where you can sit three people abreast. There's yeah. also a 14.6 inch, uh, screen that's just for the rear seat passengers that's available. Yeah. Um, and that's and, that's larger than you get in a lot of vehicles just up front. So absolutely. And we want for three screen. powertrain choices. So there is I love this turbocharged 2.5 liter four cylinder, and that makes 300 horsepower, 311 pound feet of torque. There is a twin turbocharged 3.5 liter V6, and that makes 375 horsepower and 390. But wait, there's know. more. Yeah, there's one more. The, the, and, but wait, there's more. It's not yeah. just one more. There's more. Tell them, Bruce. Yeah. This and is cool. You can get a version with an electric supercharger in addition to that turbo. And that version makes 409 horsepower, 405 pound feet of torque. I mean, so. it's a little more power, but who doesn't want the turbo supercharged Genesis? Right. Turbo super turbo and supercharged. Exactly. I, I mean, I mean that was, yes. Is it supercharged? Yes. Yes. Well, which is it? It's got it's, all it's, of it. It's got both. It's got both. It's got both. 
we pressurize down low with the supercharger until the turbos kick in and take it away. I'm trying to remember my aircraft history, and I feel a little ashamed that I'm not remembering it better, but I'm fairly certain there were World War II aircraft yes. that that utilized turbochargers and superchargers. Yes. Turbo turbo supercharged engines. Yes. Um, I believe what, both on the German side and on the British side, yep. if I'm not mistaken. Yep. And I mean, what a and what a thing to offer on a vehicle. I mean, it's not a huge power increase to get the electric supercharger, but it's I I just love saying it's, cool yeah, it's, 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 it's it's turbo supercharged, right? Oh, yeah. you could have both. Yeah, yes, you can. Because I mean, technically, well, in, in a regular supercharged system, you get the supercharger is belt driven, the turbochargers are exhaust driven. So yeah, they, I mean they 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 both work. And, and you as gotta hear about this, I want to say how cool the center console looks where it's got there's just like all sorts of metal and it's got different textures to like different areas um we're looking at it now for anyone watching on youtube or for anyone watching the the video version it's just a really slick look uh in terms of interior design like it's it, it yeah slick is how i would call it i can't really think of a better word than that of you know, there's polished elements, there's matte elements, there's kind of this fractal element. It's just kind of all a bunch of things at one time, and it looks pretty damn cool to me. I really enjoy uh, the design direction that Genesis is taking with all of their vehicles. The GV80, I think, it looks looks almost fantastic inside. I, I'll be honest, I don't like the 27-inch screen, not because of the size. Really? But, Why? But... but um, and this is a design trend that I've seen with a few oh, automakers. Smith, I'm where... going to interrupt you for just a hot second here. Tell me this does not look like Johnny Five short from circuit. From short circuit. Oh, my God. I was about to say that. They got Johnny Five in there. Like that. I haven't seen that movie in decades. Insane. I'm scared to watch it because I remember it fondly when I was young. There's a and... weird intimate scene between a robot and Ali Sheedy. And it's weird even to think about now. Oh, I'm afraid to watch it now because I'm pretty sure it's not one. It's just not going to hold up well. And two, I'm going to be like, this isn't nearly as good as I remember it. So I think I think that memory needs to stay in my childhood. A memory, exactly. Um, yeah. um, I encountered the same thing with the movie uh, PCU from 93. I have not seen that. 92, 94. 93, yeah. I was, 92 oh, like, was in my head. but Like, like, like a high schooler getting ready to go to college, watching yeah. that movie. Awesome. I watched it again, like 10 years later. And it's just like, Oh my God. Yeah. No, it just, it just, it doesn't fly anymore. Totally. Anyways, back to Genesis, what I was talking about. Yes, sir. The 20, the 27 inch screen. Uh, I mean, it's just the square screen. It's situated tablet style there on the dash. It just doesn't, it doesn't feel like it's really integrated. It feels like somebody at Genesis said, Let's take a 27 inch screen and put it in the car, but we're not, we're just going to set it up there. I mean, it looks like it's just kind of sitting on the dash and, and that's, just, I know that's, that's like the floating style and, and that's a trend that's that some right. automakers are taking, but it, it looks, it looks like an afterthought to me. It doesn't look like something that was thought of ahead of time and then integrated smartly. I mean, it's integrated. It's in there. It's not like they just stuck it on with Velcro. But it just doesn't. The rest of the interior looks so well proportioned and thought out. Yeah. And then the screen just looks like it's just sitting there. And so, it, I feel a little let down by it. I agree and I disagree with you at the same time. I agree that the screen, I like the big screen, but I agree it looks like an afterthought once you look at kind of the lower displays and stuff like that. Yes, it's exactly. So well integrated. Like it looks like a late 80s, early 90s hi-fi setup to me um, mm -hmm. where, you know, it, it, it's just, it's well integrated and it looks very handsome there. And that's not the image I wanted. This is the image I wanted. So for anyone looking here, that lower screen, it reminds me of like a, like an old school Sony or like Panasonic late it, early ish 1990s hi-fi setup where you you're selecting things it it's really handsome 
and it seems really well thought out and it's kind of it doesn't quite match with the screen that's above it at least in my opinion and kind of oh. seems like in your opinion too yep um when you when you look at other styling cues in the interior choosing that style for the screen it draws attention in an unwelcome way um and yeah thanks for sharing the comment there from group fbc the other issue with the screens is no matter what they do there will be times when reflections make them utterly unreadable i sure. do like having like just like a the, the screen you know kind of just set back a little bit where there's a little bit of a lip over top i think that really that really helps with the reflections this just looks like it's, it's sitting out there in the open yep totally agree um but yeah we have no pricing information about this right. vehicle we know it's coming obviously it's going to debut in south or south america south korea first um and it's going to go on sale there very soon and by very yeah. soon i mean october 11th so like next two week. weeks from now <laughs> oh, oh yeah oh, yeah two weeks two weeks from now that's right yeah um, so yeah, it's right around the corner yeah so you know and then eventually it will trickle out to other markets we again we do not know for certain whether it's coming to north america we're pretty sure it's coming to North America because this is not the type of vehicle that they would, you know, make South Korean only or, you know, Europe right. only or something like well, that. And, this... and I mean, the GV80, if nothing else, the standard GV80 is here. Absolutely. Um, that too. And, yeah. and, it, and it certainly makes sense to have the coupe here as well. And yeah. As, as we get more information, you know where to go. Motor1.com. <laughs> That's right. We've got it. We've got it all right there for you to read and peruse. And you can bet that when there is a debut for North America, we'll talk about it here, too. That's right. So moving on to another high end SUV. This one's a little bit more performance oriented than the Genesis. And this is Deep Breath, the Porsche <laughs> Cayenne S E Hybrid which is now the middle child in the lineup. Uh, we talked about another Cayenne fairly recently. And sorry, I am vamping for myself here as I try to pull up my I, I tab can, with the photos. I can totally, and there I they can, are. I can totally vamp for you because I nope. wrote the piece. I do. I did have to reread it because I couldn't re even remember that I wrote it. And that was just, what, a couple days ago. So like that's three four days ago yeah <laughs> yeah it's like it's like oh i better read i better reread the the cayenne thing here just to make sure oh i wrote this all right yeah. um yeah it's it's the middle child um with the with the i guess younger or smaller brother being just the cayenne e-hybrid um mm -hmm. and then the one that we talked about recently the cayenne turbo e-hybrid um mm -hmm. this one fits right in the middle not too spicy not too mild just right if you follow I that mean, sort of thing what does but it, what does that mean we yeah exactly you have to like you have to put it in porsche terms because like if this were you know a, another vehicle you'd be like oh it's the middle child i i, I don't necessarily want this one the, this the middle the makes... middle child still has 512 horsepower Exactly. 512 horsepower, 553 pound feet of torque from a turbocharged three liter V6 with an electric motor. Um, and it will hit 60 in 4.4 seconds and it'll do the quarter mile in 13 seconds flat. And that's a that's little bit that, that's a little bit quicker than just the regular Cayenne S in a quarter mile. Um, I didn't have the top speed in the article, but I did look it up online. Top speed is 163 miles an hour. So yeah, that's that's your middle of the road Cayenne S E hybrid, which would be probably a, a range topper for performance with a lot of other automakers. Of sure. course, the range topper with Porsche is the 729 horsepower <laughs> turbo E hybrid. Um, that's just insane. Yeah. Um, and then on the other end, and mind you, we're, we're talking about the e-hybrid world. You can still get regular versions of the Cayenne as well. Um, the standard Porsche Cayenne e-hybrid is only, with my air quotes, 463 horsepower. So yeah, you have 463 horsepower, 729. This one in the middle at 512. Um, of course, it's still all-wheel drive. It's got the eight-speed Teptronic transmission, all kinds of standard equipment. It's got the Sport Chrono Package standard the two chamber suspension standard. Um, you can get it either has the standard SUV or in the sleeker coupe styling. Um, yep. They both have the same performance metrics. 
Um, the coupe but will come standard pay, with black trim. I was going to say, you have to pay a bit more for the coupe. Uh, yep. The standard model, after destination, that's $101,750. If you're, you know, I want that coupe version, that's $105,650. So, a literal price to pay for the style, a little, a literal. Yeah, because otherwise price. they're, you know, in terms, all the powertrains are the same. All of the interior appointments are the same. You just have to pay a bit more if you want less space. Does that make sense? I don't I know. Mean, I mean, that's, well, that's what I said. You're literally paying for the style because technically you are getting less vehicle. You're getting less space inside. Um, yeah. Which... When you're talking about a sport utility, okay, there's the sport section and then there's the utility, utility section. section. So you're getting a little bit more sport, a little bit less utility. Um, I think, I, haven't we had this discussion before, Bruce, where totally uh, where it's like, you know, I, I think I, I wouldn't go for the coupe. I would go for just the regular SUV I, because I, don't, I might give up that space. Yeah, I can't think of a logical reason for going for the coupe. You know, maybe an emotional reason of like, may I like that sleeker rear end, but if I could pay less money and have more storage space, I, I don't know why I just wouldn't do that. I, and and can we just can we just acknowledge Group FBC saying this is the Jan Brady of, of Cayennes? I got to be honest, as I was writing the uh, writing the story, and then as I socialed it online, I had middle child in my head. Yeah. I was thinking I was thinking about the Brady Bunch. It's, you know, but it's even more turbo, than that, turbo, that. turbo. <laughs> Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I hate myself today. Look no, at you're you're doing fine. <laughs> you're doing fine, buddy. Um, yeah, I, I obviously Porsche sells the coupe version because there are people out there to buy them. You and I, mm -hmm. Smith, we are not consumers of that vehicle, and I'm not going to judge someone that buys that. Oh, no. Oh, no, not at all. I don't necessarily, I don't know why you pay more to get slightly less. I mean, it's it's all about the look and the styling. I guess, I guess some people might feel, well, an SUV is a little too stuffy like a family vehicle, but this is a coupe. This is, this is my sporty SUV. Um, I, yeah. and, and I just, I just don't, I don't understand the argument, but that's okay. I don't have to understand the argument right. to appreciate that it's there, that it's a valid opinion and I, I welcome it. Um, it's just yeah. not really my thing. I don't think there's any coop. Well, I, I, I take that back. I'm, I'm going to just become my own hypocrite because I think Ooh, I'd take the GV, I, I'd take the GV80 coupe over the GV80. The GV80 I coupe, I, I, I think has, has some pretty smart styling. The GV80 um, in SUV format is all right. I won't say it looks it looks awkward, but like the Cayenne here, the the Porsche in regular SUV guys, I think it looks fantastic as it is. I yeah, I'll I will agree the Porsche looks fantastic, and I would take the regular GV80 over the coupe. I okay, the that's coupe fair. Inspired SUV thing has never quite made sense to me, but I understand that they exist and they sell enough. You know. BMW, they must. Mercedes, Porsche, they, Genesis. Everybody like, wouldn't be doing it, right? Exactly. There, there's clearly a market for it. I just don't necessarily understand it. So it yep. is what it is. Just offer it a little bit for everybody. You know, Porsche, they do have a lot of information out. Uh, one thing that we don't have yet, though, because this is a hybrid, um, it does have a 25.9 kilowatt hour battery. Porsche mm -hmm. says you can fully charge it up um, on a level two charger in a couple hours. But there's no mention of electric range yet. And I actually contacted Porsche directly because we haven't had this yet for any of the new e-hybrids. Right. That information will come closer to when it goes into production um, and or closer to deliveries, they said. And mm -hmm. that's going to be next spring. Um, okay. And I find it a little odd. Am I am I placing an order for a, a plug-in hybrid vehicle where I don't necessarily know what my electric only range is going to be? I but I, I mean for I, the, no, I for, the for the turbo saying. for the turbo, who cares? I, I'm, I I'm getting the turbo for the performance. Also buying a Porsche, like at what point do you start to care? Like 
I think yeah. I think at a hundred thousand dollars, I mean that's that's still pricey, but at a hundred thousand dollars, we're getting jaded, Bruce. How many vehicles cost you know right around the six figure mark there? And they're I mean, they're not extraordinary or fantastic. They're just vehicles with a fair amount of features. Um, I mean, this one, 512 horse. I mean, it's certainly no slouch. It's not slow. No. But but I, I think you I get mean, that. You, you care and I point. don't own cars that are going to hit 60 in four seconds. Nope. No. Nope. But, like, if, but if, if I was in this market and I couldn't afford or I didn't want the ridiculous overpowered uh, e-hybrid turbo with 729 horsepower... Hey, 500 will be fine, especially mm-hmm. if I know I could do my 20 mile round trip commute on electric power alone. How cool yeah. would that be to have that kind of, you know, I, I yeah, would kind of want to know right. that. So I, I, I found it, I found it intriguing enough to contact Porsche directly and say, totally. Hey, do you guys, do you guys have any range figures yet? Not yet. That will yeah. come closer to when deliveries begin. I mean, uh, that's so, our, so presumably our job, next year, our job is to be skeptical. We report on cars and we have to be skeptic- skeptical Sorry, about every spec, figure, number, whatever that they give us. And we need to ask about them. And that's what we do, ideally. Every day, we are contacting automakers and saying, hey, what about this? Hey, what about that? You know, it, it, that's what we are supposed to do. And, you know, that's our job. And, and we're and doing that's, our and job. And that's how it should be done, right. Of so. course. Yeah, absolutely. I, I was, I guess, not maybe a little disappointed. It's like, well, we have all of this other information. I mean, what, what's, what's the holdup here with with the range? Unless they're trying to dial something in, or, I mean, I'm not. I obviously don't work for Porsche. Maybe their uh, their research says, you know what, our our buyers aren't really that interested in range. So I bet they're not. We we, we just we we won't worry about it that much. We'll uh, we'll hold off. We'll dial it in. And then we'll announce it, you know, when we're absolutely 100% dialed in on where we want to be. So in any case, that information will come later. Sounds like probably early next year. Mm -hmm. Well, here is something we will know about in roughly 10 days from the time you and I are recording this show. For anyone watching on uh, YouTube, it'll be even less. Or for anyone listening, I'm sorry. It'll be even less. We're going to know what Bo is. What? I, I'm looking at this picture that you put up, and I see Bo on, oh, on, come on. on a red background with a, a wheel with some kind of weird star pattern in the middle. What is Bo, Bo all about? Bo, Bo knows breaking. Bo knows. <laughs> Bo knows. What is what is that Bo attached to, Bruce? So clearly, that is a Brembo brake caliper Brembo. in red, and uh, we can see this yeah. wheel. I described it in the post that I wrote about it. That it, to me, these wheels look like they're a light gunmetal, or maybe just a gunmetal in general finish. And uh, these are not wheels you can generally get on the WRX because this is the new WRX TR. And it is going to debut on October 7th. And Travis Pastrana and Bucky Lassick is going to are going to debut the car. And we unfortunately we don't know a whole lot more than that. Other than that, that's why it's a teaser. Exactly. So here is what Subaru said in their announcement that it would be a sharper and more enthusiast focused model of the WRX. And they released this image. And other than that, we just have to speculate for now, unless they release another teaser, until October 7th. But as I put out in the story, you know, the STI is dead. We know that. There's no ST, there, the STI is not coming back. And I, what I said was, maybe this is something that, you know, is a little bit of bridging the gap between the WRX and the, the now defunct STI. Maybe, you know, clearly it's going to have Brembo brakes because I can't think of another big brake manufacturer who is famous for their red calipers. Uh, with with no, Bo in the back out, Rambo brakes? Yes, it's got Rambo brakes. That's right. Or, or, or maybe that's Rainbow. Maybe there's a W on the other side. Uh, that's true. I, I didn't think of that. Or, but, or, or, or maybe these are... are sailboat breaks b-o-a-t I, i'm kind of stretching you're, this you're real stretching it yeah 
but you know, it, so it's going to have a unique set of wheels. We can see these Y-shaped spokes. Um, like I said, kind of a light gunmetal finish on there. And what I'm fairly, fairly certain are Brembo uh, brakes on that as well. And we don't know much more than that, other than that Subaru says, sharper and more enthusiast focused. What does that mean? I don't know. Well, don't correct know. me Correct me if I'm wrong. Wasn't there a TR at some point in the past where it was kind of like just a, a more basic performance model that kind of left the door, door open for upgrades? I look this up. Wasn't it called the TS? What was it? Was it the TS? It could be. I'm not. I'll be honest. I'm not that up to speed on on some of the WRX and some of the various trims over the years. But I oh. I want to say there was some sort of version where it was just kind of just kind of like a stripped down. There was no. They're totally. I think. And if someone wants to correct me, and if I'm wrong, I will totally accept. I think that was the TS. Um. Uh, but again, that's the, the you know S and R are right next to each other in the alphabet, so we're you know we're not that far off. I will say, uh, Phil. Uh, oh, Phil's got a dog as his uh, avatar. Good for you. Uh, P. Yeah, I'm gonna call you Phil JD, and if you want to pronounce some other way, that's fine. Bo knows rallying. He does. Uh, Bo knows rallying. Um, props okay, so. So, so we had a, a. I'm I'm doing a little bit of Google work here as we're as we're talking. Sure. Um. I mean, we do have the 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 WRX TS that's uh that's actually available right now. So, um, this I this won't be like a, a TS. I'm assuming. Presumably um, not. Otherwise, I'm, I'm not. I'm not that. seeing. Am I seeing anything on TR? Yeah, see, everything that I'm getting on TR is just the you know the teaser that we got today. Yeah. So, I, no, buddy, I looked it up as I was writing the story. I TS exists, to my knowledge, and again, if someone wants to correct me, this would be the first TR, which would obviously be one step beyond TS. Maybe I don't know. Well, well, okay. I've I've got something here from wrxtuners.com. So shout out to wrxtuners.com. Okay. I'm popping up on my on my Google thing today here. This is just a, a post from somebody from 2010 talking about uh a TR. The WRX TR hit the market in 2006. Stands for tuner ready, meaning it's a stripped down version of the WRX. Although it okay. had the same 2.5 and 5 speed. It typically came with little to no options, which made the price lower. Um, so maybe okay. my memory isn't entire. I I don't remember it being. I don't I don't associate it with being like some like like really cheap model though. I don't, I don't know. Well, we'll have to see. But it looks like there there may be a, just you know a, a precedent for the TR that's coming on October. Yeah, 7th. and I. I tried, you know, I, I did my best. I tried to look stuff up. I did oh, not see that. I And keep and I mean, I'm reading this from like some forum from a poster 13 years ago. So <laughs> it's not, I'm, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm just doing what the average person does here, taking a look at Google. Okay. But yeah. That, so it could be like for, a, for a, just a very specific market somewhere. But any, regardless of that. There mm -hmm. is a hotter version of the WRX coming. And as I put in the story, the current WRX, it debuted for the, 2020, the 2022 model year. It received no updates for 2023. And so this will be a 2024 model. And so presumably, and I, you know, we don't know this for certain yet, that it's going to be an actual trim level rather than a special edition. We don't know yet. But, you know, the fact that Subaru's finally paying attention to the WRX and making a hotter model. That's pretty cool. Like I, you know, you can't, you know, anything they do to that model is interesting. Mm -hmm. That's kind of where I am. Yep. No, but I'm there. I mean, I've got a Subaru sitting in the garage, so I'm yeah. all on board. Group FBC WRX <laughs> TR ATX for <laughs> AEV. That's right. Don't don't give anyone any ideas because there might be somebody somewhere thinking we can make one of those. No, no, no. 
No more alphabet soup, people. Come up with names. I would prefer names too, if I'm honest. And so, uh, more, more, but more, more to come on that. Before we get to the last thing, Bruce, do we want to do? Do we want to revisit an email here? We do. Yeah, absolutely. Do you have it pulled up, or do you want me to pull it up? I can pull it up here right now. This comes okay. from uh, Ted Adam Green. Thank you for emailing us this. This goes way back to the beginning of September. It does. Um, we were, if I remember correctly, we were talking about just car movies and, and TV shows and things like that. Yeah. Well, what brought it up was that, you know, I was asking for car movie suggestions and stuff that we might be able to talk about on the podcast or just kind of stuff that I could watch. And Ted Adam Green, you knocked it out of the park with this one. So. I, so, I've yet I I have yet to look this up just because I've been very busy. But um, Ted Adam Greenan mentioned, hey, th- there was a movie called Moon Runners that was kind of like this weird, almost like alternate universe Dukes of Hazard. Um, so I mean, he sends in the email, kind of talking about it. Um, we get in after a fun night of hanging out, talking about just you know friends things, doing things like that. Um, unwinding this cheap 1970s movie is on, but then I start to notice something or rather some name specifically, Bo and Luke, uncle Jesse, Daisy, the boar's nest and more. That's Dukes of Hazard stuff, That's but Duke this was Hazard. not, yeah. this was not Dukes of Hazard. This movie is called moon runners. And he goes on to say, what the heck? There was no internet to look things up. So we actually started paying attention and trying to figure it out for ourselves. Whalen Jennings who was the narrator for Dukes of Hazard was narrating the movie. It was enough to think you were tripping on something, but all of us were watching and I don't think, and I don't drink much less do drugs, but we could have concocted this fever dream alternate version of our beloved car theme TV show. Time passed over the years. We kind of thought it was a group hallucination at times. Uh, But yeah, this, this was an actual movie. It just wasn't really the humorous movie or the you know the the kind of the the humor sided uh dukes of hazard that we know the, mm-hmm. this was more of just kind of like a, a serious southern family and you can imagine what moon runners stands for um you know running a little bit of shine sure. uh but yeah thanks for sending that in ted um i like i said i haven't had a chance to really look into the movie but i want to see it now i i've got to see what it's about um and yeah that that's that, that's why i love rambling about cards that's why i love the ramblers we have we have the best listeners out there totally absolutely i mean hell what was it today um in our chat with brett evans who has been on the show before we were talking about things and we ended up getting onto the topic of uh, the it crowd or the IT crowd. I've never been sure how you say it. And he did not know that there was an American uh, version of that with uh, what um, Jessica St. Clair, Joel, what's his name? Yeah, th- there was a very good version of that. And it re- it was one episode and it's still out there and you can find it on the internet archive and you can find all sorts of fun stuff there. And yeah, yeah, it's worth looking about looking for things there. Uh, recently, well, not recently, like three, four months ago, we were talking about uh, uh, Revenge of the Nerds, and that is also, or was also, I don't know if it still is, with our boss Adrian Padnow, who had never seen that movie before, and so I shared it with him there, and he watched it because he loves '80s stuff, and uh, you know, he got a kick out of it. So. You know, there's all sorts of kind of forgotten movies that are out there. And just because they're forgotten doesn't mean they're bad. Well, sometimes it does. Sometimes it does. <laughs> sometimes it's best to leave the past in the past. Hence why I'm not watching Short Circuit or wasn't there a sequel Short Circuit 2? Yes, there was. I'm absolutely not watching the sequel. Yeah. No. I made the mistake of watching Smoking the Bandit 2. About yeah, a year ago, and it had been a lot of times. I've seen Smoking the Bandit a lot. It's been a while since I've seen Smoking the Bandit too. Ugh, bad. Yeah, bad, bad, bad. And I, and I don't dare. I don't TV dare go after movies of Smoking the Bandit. There's like Smoking the Bandit three and four, but they played on like 
TNT or USA or like. Well, Smokey and the Bandit Three was a regular movie. Oh, okay. But 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 then they went to uh, yeah, it was like a they did like a like a little TV kind of mini series thing, uh, where he was driving a Dodge, a black Dodge Stealth. I like some should be forgotten. Looking at you, Smokey and the Bandit Three. <laughs> What what uh, Jerry Reed and Jackie Gleason like driving around with big sharks on their roofs trying to do some weird. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great movie. No, it's not. No, it's not. No, it's not. But we did get introduced to the new styled um, Trans Am that I think came out in 1982. We got a good look at that for the I I don't know if that was the first movie to feature it or not. It, it must know, with, have been because I thought that was an the 83 model, but with model years, then yeah, that yeah. would make sense. So yeah. yeah. So you gotta anyway. find the good and gotta find the good in, in everything. Totally. But yeah, hey, email us podcast at one.com. You got weird car movies you want to talk about? Email us. We'll look them up, we'll talk about them, we'll have all kinds of fun. Smith, you and I have talked about doing a weird car movie show for I think the entire time the show has been going on, the issue has just been copyright stuff that like we can't figure out how to do it. But if we could figure out how to do it, you and I would love to watch bad car movies and comment over them. Oh yeah. And oh yeah. The, the, what a what a terrible segue to what should be a really amazing car. <laughs> from bad car movies to the Aston Martin Valhalla. We got a That's little right. more, we got a little more information on Aston Martin's quite a bit more information, actually. Yeah. Um, their long awaited mid engine supercar. This was first announced. I mean, if you, well, if you don't consider like the prototype stuff, um, I think Valhalla was announced in 2019. Mm hmm. And then uh, in 2021, I think we got an update that okay, we're not going to do prototype the prototype. And... Yeah, we're not going to do the V6. We're going to do the V8. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, then every now and again, we get you know a little bit more information. Oh, it it should be coming for 2020. Well, now we have some more information. We have some images of the inside. We have some images of the outside. Um, <sighs> basically, Aston Martin. Uh, sent out an announcement, kind of saying it, it, the the takeaway for me was, "Hey, we're still working on this thing. It's coming along, and we are on track to have the deliveries, the production and delivery start in 2024, which is what we've been hearing for a while. But I mean, they're they're now kind of putting their foot down and saying, "Hey, this is happening." Um, and they wanted to talk about some of the development process, and you know, while giving us some photos. And I, I think I think it does look fantastic on the outside. Sure, I mean, that hasn't really changed. We're getting a good look at, at the inside, uh, but they're they're very keen to say, "Hey, we're we're pulling heavily from our experience in Formula One in mm -hmm. developing this car." And for those, and let me just take a, a little moment for those who don't necessarily remember what this car is all about. Um, mid-engine, yes. Four liter twin turbo flat plane crank V8 spinning yep. to who knows how high, but no, 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 but wait, there's more. It's a, it's a hybrid. So it's got that twin turbo V8 with three electric motors, one for each front wheel. So that's two. And then an integrated motor um, in the transmission for the third motor mm -hmm. all combined Aston Martin is saying 998 horsepower. Mm -hmm. I sus I suspect I didn't do any conversions. I suspect that's metric horsepower since this is coming straight from Aston Martin. So SAE is probably going to be a little bit lower, but I mean we're still talking well, yeah, barely. Yeah, yeah, it'll be a little bit lower. And if and if memory serves me correct, I think the last time we heard anything specific about the Valhalla, it was more around 930, 940. So powers up a little bit hey if you're making a, a crazy expensive crazy exclusive hypercar keep taking it up right um, sure one little bit of information that i don't know if we had before uh yes. but we have now they were talking just about some of the ways in which they were saving weight um the transmission doesn't have a reverse gear yep we've seen that from other automakers recently too um the electric motors 
and specifically they said the the front mode the front wheels you know the electric motors and the front wheels will handle reverse duties mm-hmm. so instantly my mind being the adolescent that i am is this a million dollar mid-engine hypercar that can spin front wheel drive donuts can well I re- can i raise my hand and be the first person to volunteer to try because as somebody who has driven many, many, many a front wheel drive car, front wheel drive donuts are fun, man. It's just, hmm. it's just, you crank the wheel, you floor the gas, and you just make yourself and everybody in the car sick. It's a it's something I never considered, but theoretically, <laughs> I'm, the, I'm the only one, right? Well, yeah, theoretically, yes. Theoretically, you're right. I, I guess I don't know because neither one of us have driven it. But if all just logic, the front wheels, yes, you're right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if just the front wheels are, you know, they're they're going backwards for reverse. Turn the wheel, floor the gas, and reverse, and <laughs> just keep that one inner back wheel in one spot and let the front just spin you all around. Yeah, buddy. That's that's all kinds of silly fun for me right there. I'm sure that wasn't what Aston Martin wanted me to it take wasn't. away from their announcement because, not, no. because they are doing all kinds of R and D um, and they are pulling heavily from formula one, the aerodynamics. Well, first of all, they said um, 90% of like a lot of the technical development that's going on here is done is all simulation with 10% being, you know, kind of, kind of practical exploration. Um, that involves a lot of wind tunnel testing. They were talking about um, how th- they're working with the underbody of the car. That's where most of the downforce for this is going to come from, not with big wings on you know on the outside, but just how they're channeling airflow underneath the car. Yep, um, that's the way I understand things too. And 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 they also bumped it along by saying, okay, we're drawing from Formula One on that, but. We can also employ active aero, uh, which you can't have to, the, to that degree in Formula One. Or so we're all, including, yeah. yeah. So we're including active aero on this. They were talking about, you know, just exploring like little louvers in front of the rear wheels, the that channel that helps to channel air up, that basically helps suck the car down to the ground. Um, I need to look at my story really quick because I can't remember exactly the amount of downforce they said it was going to have. Um, it will generate 1,000 over 1,322 pounds or 600 kilograms of downforce at 149 miles per hour. Obviously, you're not driving 149 miles an hour over um, to the store but track. But yeah, but come on. Yeah. I mean, you're taking this to the track. I, if I were buying one of these, I would absolutely be enjoying it at the track. Presumably. Um, yeah. And considering when you look at it. And I mean, yeah, hey, it looks like a mid-engine supercar, but it doesn't have all kinds of crazy wings or things on it, you know, like like we see with. And I, this isn't a negative at all against Porsche. I think their GT3 cars are just amazing with the, like the big wings back there. You don't have any of that, so there's so much just uh, just design and uh, and technical uh, thought going into this that they're pulling from Formula One. I mean, that was really the big takeaway there. The interior, they said. They're pulling from ergonomics and Formula One to try to find the perfect combination of comfort with driver, with a nice driver focused position. Uh, There's a false floor up Mm -hmm. at the pedals that elevates the heels while then the composite rear seat or the composite seat is angled back. So you're going to kind of sit like F1 style position to a degree with your feet. Right. Have you up? ever seen yeah. it's like a lounge chair where your feet are kind of Yep. If you can imagine your feet and your um your shoulders your feet and shoulders are almost in line. Exactly. Yep. I don't think it's going to be that extreme because because frankly, I'm not sure how comfortable that would be for a long time. I mean, I mean F1 cars aren't known for comfort, right? Yeah. Um, they, they're known for pulling three G's in a turn. You're not going to pull three G's, um, in, in a turn with the Valhalla, but they're, they're plugging in that kind of engineering. Um, and that was really the takeaway here. They're spending a lot of time, um, trying to pull it all together. You've got the electric motors spinning it backwards for front wheel drive donuts. Yay. Um, and they also say 
and uh, I I know that there was at least one person uh, I think in the comments of this story um, talking about the fact that okay technically they don't even have a car on the road yet they will they do say they will have a full road going prototype out by the end of this year. Yep. Group FBC um, so they are making progress. Good way of describing things. Think of laying in a bathtub with your feet up over the edge of the bathtub. And that's another good way of describing things that that is how a lot of rate. If you think about endurance racers or formula one drivers, that's mm -hmm. how they sit for those long periods of time. And it seems like it would be really uncomfortable, but they do it. So, well, yeah. well, and I mean, you're again, you're also, you're looking at not just, you're looking at not comfort, but performance. You're looking That's at, yeah. you know, being able to, to better position yourself in the car when you're taking and, you know, crazy high speed corners, pulling some, some larger G's. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I don't think it's going to be to that extreme in this car but yeah i mean that's that's really the takeaway there plus i mean we got a lot of new images to look at um it certainly looks fantastic um uh, i can't wait to see i can't wait to see where it goes and 999 are planned for production aston martin says they are on track to have production and delivery start next year mm -hmm. it's certainly been a long time coming very um, like what 20 yeah 18 well, I, I, I mean 20 2019 from the first 20, valhalla yeah. announcement but sure. they had they had what was it like am was it am 23 it was like a like a uh just a weird prototype mock-up yep. designation that they had going on for it i mean yeah i mean things have certainly changed over the years obviously it was supposed to be a v6 to start and then they went to the v8 to the v8 uh, hybrid yep. system um all indications are it's going to be worth the wait so i can't wait to see it now that they're selling DBXs and making good profits from their SUV, bring it on. That's right. More supercars. So we're going to finish up here because uh, we do actually have the time because we're 52 minutes in and we had we had kind of saved this time. just in case. And um, for anyone listening and for anyone commenting, I want to ask you folks, how do you feel about us covering campers rvs motorhomes whatever it is you kind of want to call them because right in terms of motorone.com we do very good uh traffic for these stories we have, but we i've have never a been really good quite, audience yep but i've never quite understood whether you guys want to see this stuff but this whether one is one that is kind of so far above the pale that i i kind of want to share it with you because this guy is like this guy well, is obsessive and it's it, it's amazing let, let me set this up for you while you're pulling it up here because Please. this is this is something that i found and i immediately yes, thought okay we, we've got to write about this um i personally love the idea of stealth campers things that look ordinary on the outside and then you get inside and they're Hi, extraordinary welcome to my channel where i take you um, on tours of your and there we have the uh, the video intro. Um, Sorry, Smith. I had to. This is. Uh, that, that, that's all right. That's all right. This is a cargo trailer, and it still, for all intents and purposes, looks like a cargo trailer on the outside. Yeah. And then you open it up, and this guy has created an extraordinary, fantastic interior. Um, and Bruce, I, I mean, I saw some of the video. I didn't get to see all of it. Can oh, really? you tell okay. us? Can, can you tell us a little bit about this? Because this is his full time home, correct? For yes. for a few years now. Yeah, for a couple of years now, for like two years now. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so again, like you said, it looks like from the outside, other than the window and the propane tanks, you would look at this and just think it's someone's cargo trailer, like. And at least in the U.S., and I understand we have readers or listeners from outside of the United States, this is what kind of folks who, if you haul a lawnmower or, you know, stuff like that, th this is what they use. It's a yeah. very, like, commonly seen thing. A, a dual axle, a double axle, just utility trailer yeah. um, it's, it's, that I would expect to see mowers. Um, or it's like where I live, it would be a good rig for pulling like your, your, your quad runners or your, sure, or your, your motorcycles. 
Um, and it does have that slanted front um, that sometimes you can see with like snowmobile trailers, especially where yep. you, you can open up one side and then put down an angled trailer and then you drive up on the back and then just drive straight off yeah. either side. So it looks like it's just a very, a very normal, a, a, a nice, but normal utility trailer. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, this does not look out of place in a parking lot anywhere in the country, especially in a, you know, at a Home Depot or a Lowe's or, you know, any mm -hmm. sort of place like that. But this guy has turned the inside into, I, I got to say, one of the most impressive living space, compact living spaces I've seen in a long, long time. So he bought the trailer. I don't know if you just saw it. He paid $8,500 for the trailer and then just spent his time customizing the interior and this guy is a super skilled woodworker clearly um he's got uh the snake that he has inside of it with led lights he's got a fake tree that's not wood but it's uh fiberglass but he ran lights up through it and then has um uh led lights going up through there but still he's got a kitchenette He's got a uh, shower. Can, can you and pause it right there? Can you pause the video wait, right there? Wait, yeah. I, yeah. Pause, wait, pause second, it right buddy. there. Here, let me go back two spots here. And because I mean, there we I go. mean, we, I mean, we, we need to, we need to just spend a little bit of time looking at that because I, I mean, for those listening on audio, um, if you're able jump over to motor and, and look See, at our, I article. don't even think this if, is if the most not, impressive part. If if not, let me try to describe here. I mean, the outside is just a silver cargo trailer. Inside, yeah. I mean, he has he has wood planks on the top for the, for the ceiling, wood planks on the side. We're looking at the kitchen area. Um, there's just like a half moon shape uh, where he has the cabinets installed. It makes a nice little arc. But the custom and just 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 the uh, the, the custom woodworking that he's done, how he has animal shapes, everything engraved. Um, onto the cabinets like you were saying Bruce there's the, the kind of like the fake tree but he's got like this this is that is that wood or fiberglass did did he the, carve the that fake snake tree out of is fiberglass but okay, they... not all of it is fiberglass because I'm gonna pull it up here okay uh, right hold on one second I, I mean the I mean the detail the detail work is just insane so like I, I've never seen anything like this in a camper uh, I gotta find it. I'm I've sorry. very oh, seldom seen anything like this, uh, just just so, anywhere. The carvings that you'll see here on the left hand side, turns I guess, or on the cabinets that look like tree timber or stuff like that, that was all done by hand by this guy. Mm -hmm. Like he didn't buy. I don't even know where the hell you would buy that if you could buy it, but it wasn't bought. He made all of it. And so it becomes a super impressive little living space. Like, here we go. Um, I, I stopped it here for anyone watching on YouTube. The, the fake, uh, the deer head with the antlers, he hand carved all of that. And also, you know, the, the stuff that's on the, uh, um, shit, I lost my words. Um, that stuff's up here the the little bits around the lower portion like that's all hand carved just just hand carved and it looks fantastic i yeah. mean it's 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 legit art and then i love but how underneath that you still have it looks like the corrugated side of the trailer yeah well no he added that too that's not what the inside of the trailer oh, okay like because i had to look that up the inside of these trailers are largely like kind of a plywood type thing okay. and so he had to he bought corrugated steel and to make it to make it sort of match the outside of the trailer yes that's that's, that's amazing and this is his full-time home we're obviously we're looking at the kitchen here um correct me if i'm wrong but he has is there a queen size bed in the there back it there it's is. a queen yep. a queen size bed in the back um and and i believe he also has uh th th there's there's a full bathroom on board with shower yes there is yeah. so his shower is a, a livestock feed bucket essentially and he says he can actually use it as a bath like he can 
it's large enough that you can fill up with water and like bathe in it if he wants, or he can use it as a shower. Just, but, just use uh, it as a shower. Where I paused it here is uh, his, you know, bedroom. And underneath that, it's a raised bed. So he's got his clothes underneath, and then he's got uh, the raised bed on top. And then underneath, I mean, I mean, you have clothes, but it also works as almost like a little a little garage. Yeah. As well. So, yeah, I mean, when I saw this, I was just I was gobsmacked at the interior at just the, the work and the craftsmanship that's that's gone into the interior. Um, we've seen a lot of custom built uh, camper trailers, uh, van conversions over over many, many years that we've covered these. Um, and each one is is unique and impressive and special in its own way. But this one, uh, this is this is in my new Mount Rushmore of of custom camper builds. Oh yeah, I mean, you know, this guy is putting. There's so much hand work into this, like you know, the hand carving, the just the various aspects. Like we're gonna see here in just a second the lighting that he put in. So there's the red lighting and then the green lighting underneath that, which is kind of like trippy and fantastical and just you know it it's a really really cool build especially when you consider i looked these up he said he paid eighty five hundred dollars for this little travel trailer i looked at, i've seen them as low as like five grand in my yep. area oh yeah you know, you know it depends on where obviously i'm not saying he overpaid i'm just saying it depends on where you live but this well, is I, not... I mean it depends it depends on the condition too well, um man, i mean okay. if, if you find a travel trailer it's kind of beat up on the outside, beat up on the inside. Um, I mean, as long as the uh, as long as the frame isn't all rotted out, uh, you, you're going to be doing a conversion anyway. So you're probably ripping most of the guts out. You know, you can you can start pretty reasonably with one mm -hmm. of these. So, yeah, it, it it's just a really cool build. But again, um, and I've been putting this on here, so I haven't been looking at her comments, I'll be totally honest. I'm not sure if this is something that our frequent viewers want to see, because at least on the site, this sort of stuff gets just fantastic traffic. But well, if the folks who enjoy rambling about cars, they don't necessarily want to see you know, this type of build. We won't talk about it again. Well, well, so so far we're fantastic work. Anyway, so ahead, so so far we're pretty much yay on on talking about the cool stuff. Um, whether it's cool campers, cool trailers, oh. cool builds, and I got to share Group FBC's comment. I love the irony. It's all wood, <laughs> except for the actual tree, which is made out of fiberglass. Yeah. Astute well, he observation. He looked around to try to find a tree and just couldn't find one, so he had to make it himself. Which makes sense because yeah. you know it's such a specific interior and such a specific design. But like the the uh, butterflies we're looking at here, the tree branches, those were all hand carved. He he says that in the video, so I got to believe him. Mm -hmm. But and I don't know where the hell else you would buy one, so. You know that type of stuff is all, you know, hand done. It, it's a it, it's a really cool build. Very cool build, and um, and so just, this guy lives in Boulder, Colorado, and um, I'll fast forward here. You can see an SUV, uh, right about here. He does have an SUV. He does not mention like pulling it around. He seems to like be really located in the Boulder area, but he could there Good, it doesn't yeah. seem like there's any reason that you couldn't pull this to anywhere else in the country if you wanted to live somewhere else it's just not yeah. you know get, get on get thing. on the road for a little while and i mean hey a lot of people are doing the tiny home um tiny oh, yeah. home thing right now you know i've i've thought about it because we've covered these so much over the years it looks cool and fun and i think ah oh, yeah just get I on the road and you go I would, I would, I know I would be very frustrated in a very short amount of time because I have yeah, a lot of stuff. Yeah, it's not for me, I bud. like, I like having most of the stuff that I have. Yeah. Um, and I like to, I like to tinker on cars and I like having a place to work. Um, trying to do that sort of thing in the parking lot of an auto parts store, I know mm -hmm. is a traditional rite of passage. For many car people, and I've done it, and I don't want to do it. 
I, I'll, yeah. I'll, I mean, I'll, I've done. Oh, like, back to my house. I've done the kiddie pool version of that, which is replacing my battery in a auto parts store when like the battery's damn near dead. And it's not for me. I, my anxiety, my stress levels, it's not for me. It's just not like, the, you know, the biggest, is, the biggest I've done um, unplanned was a, was it an upper or lower radiator hose? I can't remember which one. Okay. But but I I popped a pretty good leak while dry. And this was this was when I was working uh, with Ford, and I was it was about a at that point it was about a forty five mile one way drive back to my house. Oh boy. And and it popped as I was leaving, and it's like okay, I got to get in somewhere, and I was in. It was, it was we'll say it's around the Dearborn area, not far from Ford headquarters. And I get into an auto parts store and go in. They got a hose. Yep. Okay. Did, can I, do you have like some, just some screwdrivers is, is really all I need. And then I needed a bunch of coolant. I was like, do you got a bucket that I can put coolant in? And they had a bucket to put coolant in. And I did the swap there and I was just, it was hot and I was just dying of thirst afterwards. And I got it all patched up in about probably 20, 25 minutes. Hit the first fast food place I could find. I was just like, yeah, I just want a large Coke. It's like, do you want it? No, just a large Coke. It's like, yeah, yeah. I could have gone in somewhere and bought a two liter, but I smell like antifreeze. Just just, yeah. just give me my large Coke. Um, unofficially, I've done things at car conventions, like, like swap exhaust systems and things like that in a parking lot. But that's that's more partly for the fun of it because there's a bunch of you around and it's like, okay, yeah. we're in the hotel parking lot. Hey, look, I just bought this high flow Y pipe. Well, let's put it on. Exactly. Give me a, give me a torch. Let's go for it. It's 2 AM. I don't care. Woo. But that's less out of necessity and more out of fun. Whereas, you know, yeah. Well, I mean, there, there have, I've, I've been fortunate where I've never had huge repairs um on the road but i have helped others uh mm -hmm. like engine swap one time at a, at a convention where okay we were able to get the car back to somebody's house that lived nearby and uh and everybody kind of pitched in and uh and helped out over the course of about 24 hours to do a quick engine swap so he could get back home so smith uh my wonderful mother has a question for you your mother is a rambler what yes what is the featured model this week? That you can't see it. No, you got to show that. It. Put it up to the camera. Is a 1959 Cadillac Eldorado Baritz convertible? Not too shabby. That is a true coupe. Actually, a convertible, but yeah. If it was, a, if it were a hard top, it'd be a coupe. Okay, okay. Um, I think that's the show tonight. Is there anything else you want to talk about? Um. Not really. I can say at this point, um, keep your eyes on motorone.com if you are interested in gaming uh, yeah. and, and specifically racing games, because I will be doing Some a review time in October. Smith is going to talk about a video game. Um, well, no, I, I can I can tell people oh, now. Can. Okay. I, I, I can tell I, people now that I, um, that. I okay. have a review copy of Forza Motorsport for okay. uh, Xbox series s x and on steam um and i will be reviewing that and posting that in the very near future um mm -hmm. i can't talk Sorry. about any of my impressions right now I but i can know, say that uh, yep you yep told i can me some specifics i wasn't sure how much i was allowed to say i can but. i can i can i can say that yep forza forza motorsports um it that, exists that, it that is review a video game that, that review is going to be coming play. very soon yeah and um, one is playing it right now very good yeah um so yeah so no impressions it's just it, it is a video game that exists and in the future you will be talking about it group fbc i was hoping for a <laughs> oh. review of iron man ivan stewart super off-road once i have my new wiring in the basement here set up i'm setting up my 80s room with the nintendo the old school nes I will get a copy of Super Off Road for Nintendo and review Absolutely. it. Absolutely, just for you. So and enjoy it. Real quick, Group FBC. There was a 
super brief moment. And what I mean by super brief, a matter of days where we were like pitching things of like various stories and we were going to try to recreate Ivan Iron Man Stewart super off-road. And this is years ago. It never happened. But there was a brief shining moment where you could have seen that on motor1.com and it, it didn't happen. But I, d- I uh, don't remember that. You don't? No. Uh, Sorry. Okay. It happened. Trust me. Okay. Yeah. I remember it. But it, it didn't end up. We were pitching it at uh, some sort of like advertising or PR or something like that. And it didn't happen. But it would have been fantastic if it had. Maybe I. No, nope, still don't remember. Okay. Fair enough. All right. I can see the smoke coming out of my head here as I'm trying. <laughs> Okie doke. Um, I think that's our show for tonight. As always, we love everyone that listens to this show because we know Smith and I like everyone has lives and you have a I million. Don't. I that's just want to go on record. Tr- I, I know I that's not true because I have talked to you this week and you've had to deal with things that happen in your life. So that is no. a lot. No. Um, zero life. Uh, that's not true. You know, we all have to deal with things. We all have other things to do. And so the fact that anyone listens to this show and gives us their time and gives us their comments and gives us their thoughts, it is so appreciated and it is so loved. And I just, it makes me want to do this show every single week. And I I just, I love it so much. So thank you for everybody who decides to give us their time and just, just thank you. And so with that, I will say good morning, good afternoon, good evening, or good night, and goodbye for this evening, and we will see you next week. Bye, everybody.